welcome learners to the third lecture on mos capacitor uh, this is a series i already said that it will consist of six to seven lectures and today you are going for the third lecture session myself arpan deashi welcome you all the learners in my course on mos and mosfet i am working presently as assistant professor in the department of electronics and communication engineering in rcs institute of information technology india and this course is a continuation of the previous two lectures if you want to understand how these things will occur uh, let me just give a simple recapitulation of the previous lectures based on these findings you can proceed for the present one in the first lecture i have started with the uh you may recall the foundation of the mos structure i have drawn the band diagram under unbiased condition as well as the biased condition and i have shown that whether how it, the band will vary for p type substrate as well as for n type substrate and i have shown the accumulation depletion and inversion condition how these different band bending occur and i have shown how the majority carrier and minority carrier will be accumulated for respective cases as several factors that will be the very first lecture which is the physics of the mos structure and i have explained it in a detailed manner once i am going to the second lecture you may recapitulate that uh, i have started with the charge profile and the electric field profile of the mos structure and i have taken as aluminum silicon dioxide silicon p type of uh, substrate for the uh, calculation purpose and i have considered the boundary conditions and solved the poisson's equation the second order differential equation is solved under the boundary condition as well as the charge neutrality condition and ultimately we have considered the relation between the surface and fermi potential everything uh, with the electric field and calculated the various type of profiles for different biasing conditions so those are the factors we have already considered and uh, uh, uh something the detailed mathematical derivation is shown in my lecture too if you have slight misconception uh, at that time uh, the lectures are available in my youtube channel so you can uh, go for a quick visit uh, brush up your knowledge if you look out the foundation that is also available under the playlist of electron device so you can just look at them and you can go through those things so i think the biased and unbiased band diagrams are quite clear and uh, i have also said that once i will go to the mosfet we will be totally uh, concentrate on the inversion condition however till now i will deal with the all those cases accumulation depletion and inversion and again you may recapitulate that i have incorporated another two important factors in the last lecture one is the flat band condition so what is the flat band condition it is nothing but a uh, intermediate stage between the accumulation and depletion where you will find basically the bands are parallel to each other or or you may say it is a more uh, generalized manner that all bands are parallel to the extrinsic fermi level that is our reference level for the semiconductor substrate so it is customary to consider that reference for all those cases and we have considered that condition as flat band condition and again in the last stage i have classified the inversion condition in two parts one is called weak inversion another is called strong inversion and we have said that the weak and strong inversion has a criteria which is totally controlled by the surface potential as well as the fermi potential if you can recapitulate those factors i will explain again with a band diagram and the uh, i think the gas uh, qv characteristics again so that you can brush up your knowledge more clearly because it is required because once we have to start the derivation we require the qv profile as well as the electric field profile also and we start our journey from there so uh, i think uh, you may you know that these factors are very essential so far as uh, mathematics as well as the physics are concerned and our significance or all sort of inferences can be drawn from there 
So uh, I, I shown these factors uh, quite clearly and I said that weekend strong inversions are very important once we go for the application of the device parts which I will try to start from the next lecture onwards. And you may recapitulate those factors again that if the uh, uh, surface potential is greater or equal to the toys of Fermi potential then it will be called strong inversion. Otherwise, if the surface potential is greater than the Fermi potential but less than the toys of Fermi potential then it will be called as a weak inversion. So again for helping you, I am going to the uh, expression of the surface charge uh, again and this is the surface charge I, I, I won't go far. Further, I will go for the graphical representation again but this is the expression of the surface charge you may recall that is our end of the day derivation so uh, based on that I will start again the capacitance profile and based on this expression I will again go for the charge profile you may recall that x axis we consider as a surface potential and y axis we consider as a charge density and that's the point we have considered when surface potential is zero that is called the flat band point and then then we consider the negative of the surface potential is the accumulation where the majority carriers are accumulated and then we consider the depletion that means the band starts to bend downwards for the p-type substrate and the rate part is shown as the depletion condition and then that the next portion that is the deep color which is shown the weak and strong inversion criteria if you forgot which one is weak and which one is strong i can say that this part will be the accumulation condition i think it's very sim uh, simple and then the next part i have shown as a depletion condition which is the rate part and then I have shown that part which is the starting to increase but not too much that is the weak inversion criteria and obviously the last part is known as the strong inversion criteria. And here I can say that if you remind that the psi f which is the Fermi potential nothing but the distance between flat band to the uh, inversion point and that is known as the Fermi potential whereas another Fermi potential value you will get from inversion point to the transition of inversion. So now I will add one extra factor that is the psi f that is equals to 2 psi f if you make your journey from flat band to the transition of inversion. Now this factor I have not mentioned intentionally in the last class because that factor will be associated with a mathematical expression and that will be very important once I will go for the CV characteristics. But for let's assume that this is my expression psi f equals to twice psi f. Now it's very simple from the diagram. And if you go for the strong inversion, then psi f will be greater than toy psi f. Now I have shown in, in this diagram that this is the surface potential we actually have to uh, consider and that is a very important criteria. Now why it is? Because when your surface potential becomes toys of Fermi potential, think about the band diagram. The band diagram is such that you have a gap between intrinsic and extrinsic Fermi exactly equal at the bulk region as well as as the inverted region. That means in the junction, exactly at the junction which is in our mathematical form that is z equals to 0, so exactly at the junction you will get that value of surface potential is equals to Fermi potential if you measure from the extrinsic Fermi. If you measure from the extrinsic Fermi, I am again repeating, but if you measure the actual surface potential, this is twice of Fermi potential. So at this condition, you are in a transition that you have to accumulate more and more minority carriers. Now you want to overlook or nullify the effect of the majority carriers that is normal P type of substrate. That means you are making a very good inversion condition. And that's ultimately required once I will go to the MOS transistor that means MOS fit. This criteria will become extremely important the weak and strong inversion criteria. But let, let oh, I will go into details a little bit later on. First try to assume these factors more clearly. And once you will get that now comes to the case of the strong inversion. Now what is 
uh, two psi f. You know the value of the Fermi potential. It's very simple. Kt by q log n a by n i. If it is n type, then it will be n d by n i. And that is your known concept of the earlier electron device class from your undergraduate level or at the beginning of the solid state device courses. So, what is psi f at the point of inversion criteria? It is nothing but 2 kt by q log n a by n i and it's very simple. You don't have to consider any other uh, complex mathematical calculation. So, under this condition, what is happening? What is the importance of the point of in, uh, inversion transition? That means from weak inversion to strong inversion. At this point, the minority carrier concentration at the surface becomes equal to the depletion charge density. Please consider the factor. Minority carrier concentration at the surface, nothing by it's called N z. If you recall the Poisson's equation, it is nothing but the N z becomes equal to depletion charge density. So depletion charge density is what? That is nothing but the dop uh, acceptor doping. So, Nz is Ni square by Na exponential Q psi by Kt, that's our known expression, and that becomes to equals to Na. So, you will get a relation between Na and Ni, and what will be that? You can calculate Na in the form of Ni, and Na equals to Ni root over of exponential that factor. So, you will get an expression of exact measurement of the dopant with a function of psi and psi is what? Psi is the potential at any arbitrary point. So, once you are moving into the inversion region, if you know the potential at that point, you can get the value of Na or reverse. You know the Na and Ni, Kt is a known factor, Q is a known factor, so, at any point, you can calculate basically what is the value of phi z with a varying z. So, that's one of the very important factors you are basically calculating. You know the function, uh, thickness of the inversion is very small. So, psi can be considered as a constant factor within this very small region. So, you can calculate the potential of inversion region from this expression and that's very important once you are setting the inversion transition that means weak inversion to strong inversion point and that is one of the beauty of this equation and that's why it is called criteria for onset of strong inversion onset means you are transitioning transiting from the weak to strong criteria so that is one of the very key factor once you are determining the characteristics of the MOS capacitor. Now, what will be our depletion approximation? Now, this expression I think is very known to all. If you forget, go to the previous lecture available in the YouTube uh, from where you will get the data. Uh, data means you can get the um, uh, mathematical derivation and the expression of the electric field, everything is clearly derived, so there is no problem. You will get, and I again say I have neglected this plus minus factor because end of the day you have to go for the inferences. You don't have to bother about the exact mathematical values and all those factors. The plus minus doesn't matter because minus is nothing but it's just a symbolic representation. End of the day you have to calculate the electric field. Minus just gives the direction. So I am taking the magnitude of the electric field and that's very important. So this is nothing but derived from the Poisson's equation. We know everything. So I think I am not going into explain those factors, but please remind once you are going to the depletion cases, these exponential factors are not very important. You will get the value of basically the Q psi by Kt, that factor will dominate because that factor will be much greater than the exponential factor, the linear term will dominate. And Q psi by Kt root over, so it will be nothing but the psi to the power half. So once you will get that, the expression becomes 2 Q N A psi by epsilon. Now please look out the variation of the electric field here. Electric field is directly related with the potential is a square root form. 
that means electric field and potential has a parabolic relationship and it's very clear from this expression so why i am considering again because if you square uh, making square the minus factor will obviously be emitted and naturally you will get a beautiful parabolic relationship so potential and field is a parabola variation so if i just try to integrate it will be d psi by psi naturally now what will be the range of the integration you know at the junction the potential is very simple surface potential so at j equals to 0 psi equals to psi s and at any value you will get the uh, variation as psi so it's very simple so if you integrate from psi to psi s it will give you an expression naturally psi equals to psi s into 1 minus something function into z total square now look out the root over term the q n a by 2 epsilon psi s now if you very closely go to your starting level of school when you have started the physics course with the dimensional analysis look out the function the square root function multiplied by z should be dimensionless so the opposite or the inverse of the square root i may better say the inverse of the square root function should have a dimension of length and what will be the uh, function so i am say 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 the function may be a length say wd i am giving them so why wd because it is obtained in the depletion condition so i am giving the suffix d and length i am designated by w so naturally it will become the depletion length now what is the significance once you derive or once you coin a new mathematical term it should have a physical significance now look out the term wd is nothing but 2 epsilon psi s by q n s of square root now you know the value of the surface potential at this condition so once in the depletion condition you know the value of the surface potential you can find out what will be my depletion length so based on the application of bias your surface potential naturally will change because the band bending will be modified as per that your wd that means depletion length will change and that's a simple parabolic relationship so depletion length is nothing but the length of minority carrier accumulation near the junction which is tuned by external bias that means the electric field and that will give you the output that means you actually you can measure it that's the simplest thing you can simply measure it so depletion length is a measurable quantity under this condition of the external bias or in an inverted manner if you know the depletion length you can estimate this is my surface potential and you know the maximum limit of the surface potential under depletion condition is equal to fermi potential it's very very simple so once you get that you can calculate the amount of depletion charge end of the j charge and current are the fundamental or the prime quantities for our practical purposes so charge is nothing but rho into wd that means charge density into wd from the poisson's equation and if you substitute the value of wd you will get the value of charge the negative sign is nothing but minority charge so i am not uh, considering why it is negative or like those things those factors i am not exactly very very important of those factors so it's it's simple but you will get the value of qd from here that means you can calculate also the relation between the surface potential and depletion charge and that is also a parabolic relation i want to establish this factor very clearly that the relation between surface potential and depletion charge it has a parabolic relationship and we can clearly establish it so what will be the maximum depletion length now maximum depletion length actually in the inversion condition if you go from depletion to inversion this is the same direction of the band bending so if you go to the extend it to cross the extrinsic fermi and goes beyond and goes to the inversion transition inversion transition 
then that will be say my WD max because we are going for psi s equals to 2 psi f that criteria I have earlier mentioned. So at the inversion transition point please think if I consider that is my maximum depletion length then I can substitute the value of surface potential as toyish of Fermi potential. And what is the value? The value is we have already shown 2 kT by Q log Na by Ni. So if I substitute the value of psi s at the inversion transition point, which is nothing but toyish of Fermi potential, then you can get the value of maximum depletion length or say or say depletion length when the inversion transition point is rich or when the we are on set on the strong inversion condition at that time we can clearly measure it and now look this is a very simple measurable quantity you know the na ni you know the epsilon. These parameters are the material parameters you already know. So you already know when the what will be the maximum depletion width. So now look out the beauty. From the material parameter, you can calculate a physical parameter that is the depletion width at the onset of strong inversion criteria. And that's extremely important from your mathematical perspective. And also the inference is you know at this depletion length how uh, we have more and more minority carrier accumulation. And that's one of the very key factor when we are going for the calculation. So that's up to the depletion approximation from our practical perspective. Now we are going to the next part which is nothing but the calculation of the capacitance. Now what is the calculation of the capacitance? We are considering the structure. Structure is nothing but a trilayer structure. I have mentioned it in the earlier of our uh, the first lecture say at the beginning that it's a, a, a semiconductor substrate at the bottom. The metal layer or the polysilicon layer at top and the intermediate there will be an oxide layer. So if it is a tri-layer structure, then we will consider one capacitance formed between the metal and oxide, another capacitance formed between oxide and substrate. So that's a very simple thing you may recall it. Um, if that is the situation, I am say C ox is the capacitance between the oxide and substrate layer and the, uh, and the substrate capacitance is C sub. So what will be the total voltage? Total voltage, one voltage will be dropped at the uh, uh, oxide layer, another is the surface potential. And oxide uh, layer is given by QS by C ox, there will be naturally a negative sign, but I am not going into that. So C ox is nothing but epsilon by T because it is the power unit area. So that's the basic uh, formation of the total applied voltage, which we have shown in the schematic diagram. And if you write down the substrate capacitance as dd psi h of minus q h and the total capacitance with respect to vm then 1 by c is the simple total capacitance formula i am not going into recapitulating or explaining those factors so it's very simple so you will get this substrate and total capacitance formula now please remind this substrate capacitance formula because now this total capacitance we want to evaluate for these four conditions. What are the four? The accumulation, flat band, depletion and inversion. And uh, I am going to also calculate in this context, I say the inversion because the formula may not be exactly uh, uh, normally derived in all those cases, but we have to show because once we have to plot the graph, actually it becomes very important to show the inversion cases also and which is exactly similar to the accumulation condition. And then I will go for the low frequency as well as high frequency analysis and we'll show why these things really happen and that's one of the very important factor for the CV characteristics. Now I have started with the case 1 which is nothing but the accumulation condition. 
So what is the accumulation condition charge expression? I think this is already mentioned when I have tried to form step by step the charge potential characteristics in my lecture too. You may go through that. The QS which is proportional to exponential minus Q psi s by 2 kT and that formula I have shown from the expression of the surface charge. You may go to the second slide of this lecture uh, just by dragging and you will find again the expression and you know that in under the accumulation condition the psi will be less than zero so naturally if you approximate you will get that value. So that's a very simple thing but once you will get that QS then calculate C sub and which is nothing but minus of dqs psi s. So if you substitute you will get q by 2 kt into vm minus psi s. Why? Because it is nothing but the qs so it will be vm minus psi s. So 1 by c accumulation you can calculate it is 1 by c ox 1 plus some function. So naturally that is the accumulation graph I am showing q versus psi but please remind this is the value of the c accumulation you can just take the inverse and you will get the c accumulation value. Next I will go to the flat band. This is the flat band point already shown in the previous lecture again. And naturally you know that flat band what will be the value of qs so it will be minus epsilon q square by n a k t square root of psi s. And again, if you differentiate Q flat band, you will get a value. Now look, it is a constant factor. So naturally, because all the bands are parallel, so you can't get a variation of the C substrate. And naturally, when all the bands are parallel, what will be the criteria? Uh, theoretically say the applied voltage should be equals to zero. Then all the bands are parallel, you are not disturbing them. So if all the bands are parallel, then how could you vary the capacitance? Because capacitance will vary once the charge variation takes place. But you are not playing with the charges. So naturally, what are the standard charges already in the material? Let them remain as it is. So substrate capacitance will remain constant and you will get that value. So that is the flat band capacitance. And look, flat band capacitance is totally a constant value, 1 by C ox plus. Uh, root over kt by epsilon q square na that is 1 by c flat band. So again you are getting a constant value. Then I am coming to the depletion characteristics. And depletion characteristics you know already the uh, value of qd is calculated just uh, five to six slides before. So if you have again a shortage uh, what will be the exact derivation can't remember just uh, turn back the video lecture go to that point you will get the expression of qd it's very simple. Now look, so C substrate will be derivative of QD with respect to psi s and it will be 1 by psi s of square root function naturally it is uh, not for the accumulation. If you recall again I am going back please. Uh, if you recall the accumulation case uh, I am showing it will be of uh, Q by 2 kT into Vm minus psi s. So now I am getting 1 by 2 psi s and if you plot it will be 1 by Cd. So that will be you see depletion and the charge profile is shown in the red color. So that's why I am just going back to help you to remember that is C accumulation. And come to the inversion. Naturally the negative exponential term will not dominate. The positive exponential term will dominate. So if it is minority carrier then you are actually band is bended it is n type so naturally the minus sign from the substrate capacitance will be eliminated because the minus sign come because it is positive or the holes so for the electrons naturally it will be emitted by eliminated so because it is now n type so it will be again the same value of the accumulation so now think you are varying your voltage but for accumulation and for strong inversion you are almost getting the same value so what will be the capacitance characteristics? Naturally in the flat band the value should be lower. In the depletion and inversion the values will be lower. Very simple. But once you will get the strong inversion again the value will be high. So it will be an opposite type of almost close to Gaussian function. Again I am repeating the factor. Please remain or uh, try to uh, think makes clear. The C accumulation and C inversion are same except the value of psi s. 
so naturally the values are very close to each other and if you uh, consider the actual value the it will be almost close to 1 by c of so it's very simple so if it is 1 by c of so i think you can uh, get the factor that okay fine i am getting that value so it will be the function of c of so if i substitute that factor again so the inversion and accumulation are same so flat band will be lower so there will be a opposite sort of gaussian profile and i am showing it how the things happening this is your vm this is your c by c ox i am making it a normalized scale naturally this will be the graph this is the accumulation then it falls and again comes back and naturally it will be c equals to c ox because c by c ox equals to 1 so naturally c equals to c ox so that will be the highest value and if you draw a line somewhere in the falling slope you will get the flat band point that is your cfb and arrow uh, if you go more more uh, the lower part of the structure you will get psi s equals to psi f you know the physics you are going towards inversion and then you will get a point psi s equals to 2 psi f that is the strong inversion and that i am calling as a low frequency curve so what will be the high frequency curve this is called a high frequency curve now naturally you will ask that if frequency changes why the curve will vary after the depletion condition why there will be one low frequency and one there will be high frequency and i may say that these variations if you measure practically the differentiation occurs uh, uh, almost around 100 hertz over 100 hertz it will be considered as a high frequency and below 100 hertz it will be considered as a low frequency but you will ask the question obviously i will expect that that why there will be low frequency variation and why there will be high frequency variation and what is the difference between them so first i am saying what is low frequency approximation it is the approximation that inversion charge follows the applied signal you may be puzzled that how charge follows a signal now think for any charge or inversion or depression there will be minority charge so there will be a response time for the minority carriers if your frequency of the applied signal is lower than the reciprocal of that response time then it will be called low frequency again i am repeating if frequency of the applied signal is lower than the minority carrier response time obviously the reciprocal of that because one is time another is frequency or the product of frequency into response time is less than one then it will be called low frequency but if it is one or greater than one then it will be higher frequency that means the minority carrier response time one by of that is less than the applied that means you can't go to the inversion condition in that manner and the depletion charge starts to dominate so if the depletion width reaches maximum then capacitance will attain a minimum value because the distance between the two uh, parallel plates if that is attained maximum then capacitance will become minimum you know c equals to epsilon a by d so if naturally wd becomes max then c will become minimum and c will attain and hold that value and that is nothing but the high frequency approximation that is known as the green graph so the red graph which starts to rise for strong inversion and becomes c equals to so that means c by c ox equals to one that is for low frequency so f into tau less than one but if you reach the depletion with maximum then the capacitance become minimum and that is your high frequency cases so these are two important parameters and once i will go for the mosfet calculations these cap area sort of parasitic and junction capacitance will come into place and at that time you have to remember what is my uh, different sort of capacitances we learned throughout the mos capacitor lessons so that completes our mos capacitor portion and from the next day we will start to calculate the different sort of charges and uh the mosfet and i will also try to cover the body effect if time permits 
and after that I will go to the IV characteristics and other threshold voltages and other properties and then in the next class I will go to the short channel effect and if time permits I will also move to the CMOS and different CMOS based circuits. And that will complete our total course of MOS and MOSFET. So wait for the lecture 4. Till now you can follow the same uh, textbook that is one of the fundamental textbook and if you want to learn or go to the research field you can start with the TORS papers which are published in the IEEE transaction series of papers on the MOSFET and then you can proceed and there are several now researches are going on the different nanoscale MOSFETs so let's continue the wonderful journey till now goodbye thank you all